your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, just because you're nervous, you don't have to be pacing up and down like a caged lion. I'm not nervous. I'm never nervous. I haven't been nervous in years. If you aren't nervous, why aren't you sitting still and reading the evening papers while I get dinner ready? I just don't feel like reading the newspapers tonight. What's so awful about that? Nothing. But why'd you put your pipe down three times in the last ten minutes and then have to go looking for it every time? I like bending over. That's why. It's good huh. exercise. And, and, and your nostrils twitch twice. Why would they twitch if you weren't nervous? How many dishes have you broken today? Only two. And you wouldn't by any chance have cut yourself peeling something. Or maybe that bandage is just for decoration. Eighteen carat cotton with a marquise shaped mercurial comb. <laughs> I cut myself. But it's only a little cut. It would have to be. It's only your little finger. David, when do you think we'll hear? Well, we sent the letter yesterday. He got it this morning. He could have opened it up right away and sent us a telegram and said that the deal was all settled and there wasn't anything to do but move right in. Things don't happen that way. You said so yourself. When did I ever say anything like that? This morning for one time. You said that buying a house was so complicated that even if Mr. Tucker accepted our offer, we still wouldn't have the house. Well, that's true, of course. You mean... There might be a hitch, and we mightn't have to buy the house after all? Have to buy it? You mean we mightn't be able to buy it? Oh, of course that's what I mean. There is a chance, David. Oh, sure, there might be something wrong with the titles. The title? Mm Mm-hmm. Is it that kind of a house? Gosh, you'd never know it to look at it. What sort of a house is it that you'd never know it to look at it? A house with a title. You'd never guess (laughs) it, would you, David? What kind of a title do you think I was talking about? I thought you meant a title like Twin Oaks or Hickory Hill or something like that. It doesn't sound right to me anymore. Yeah, you're getting warmer. I mean the kind of title that proves that the person who is selling it to us really owns it himself. Mr. Tucker? Mm-hmm. You mean you think that Mr. Tucker doesn't own the house and now he's trying to sell it to us? Right away. David, that's dishonest. You better send him a telegram right away and get him to send you your offer back. Well, I'm glad we found out about that right this at the beginning. I didn't say that Mr. Tucker doesn't own the house. All I said was that he has to prove that he owns it before we can buy it. Oh, I know he owns it. Otherwise, he wouldn't be living in it. Isn't there anything else that might happen? I mean, even if Mr. Tucker accepted the offer? I suppose so. Hey, what are you trying to do? Make me think of all the things that can go wrong later, even if the bid is high enough? Mm. Are you trying to make me feel better just in case he turns it down? You, you, uh, oh, no, no. You're just wasting your time, darling. But it's very sweet of you. If the bid's too low, I'll feel lower. Now, come on. We're going out for dinner. Oh, good, David. Where? Where? What difference does that make? Some place where we can get our minds off bids and houses. And mortgages, David. Maybe you can tell me what a mortgage is on the way to the restaurant. Mm. I'll go change and you can serenade me with the hurdy-gurdy. Why do women always have to change? What would you like to hear? Chopin? Tristan and Isolde? Beethoven's Fifth? And so, Tsarina, we play now from Tchaikovsky. The symphony pathétique. Quiet, please, in the balcony. One, two, three... Toreadora, put your coat and hat on. We're going out to dinner. Let's go down the street. David, you can't find an Italian restaurant just walking around. You can't, eh? 
Well, Mrs. Norton, an Italian by the name of Columbus found this country by just uh, sailing around. So I don't see why we can't try some more of the same. But how do you know it'll do any good? The Italian restaurant isn't made that isn't any good. I think it's always best to go to a restaurant you've heard about, don't you? You've got no wild, sweet spirit of adventure, Claudia. If that's what a wild, sweet spirit of adventure is, I've got it. But suppose something happens. For heaven's sake, what's going to happen in an Italian restaurant? Mm, you can't tell. Something might. Don't be silly. I don't know. I've been listening to the radio all day long, and I'm beginning to think that we're the only people in the world nothing ever happens well, to. Something may happen to us tomorrow. We may get the house. David, we promised we weren't going to talk about the house. Well, so we did. You were just about to tell me all the things that haven't happened to us. Nothing happens to us, David. You should listen to the stories on the radio. Everybody's always having all kinds of trouble. You you, you remember the day Bluff ran out of the door? If, if we were people on the radio, he would have bitten that little boy. And the little boy's mother would have been Mr. Carrington's aunt. And Mr. Carrington wouldn't have allowed you and Roger to go ahead with building that freight terminal. And when you heard this from Bertha who'd been listening at the little boy's mother's keyhole all morning. Hmm. You rushed down to tell me about it at the office. And the taxi cab driver was the brother of Lottie's sister's husband. And since she was desperately jealous of me... He ran into a bus deliberately. And you were taken to a hospital. (gasps) And when you came to, nobody knew whether you would ever walk again. And Lottie told you that it all happened because Mr. Carrington was secretly in love with you. And you lost your memory and wandered off. And when you came back, the police held you for murder. And when we buy a house in the country, of course, it has a hidden treasure in the attic. David, nothing ever happens to us. (laughs) And now we're going up to the country to live, and nothing's ever going to get a chance to happen to us. So, nothing happens. Didn't you once get a cinder in your eye, Mrs. Norton? That doesn't count, because someone came along and took it out for me. That doesn't count either, I suppose. Because all you did was marry him. Did I? I almost forgot. And then uh, nothing else happened except we found an apartment. Two of them, but not at the same time. And if I recall correctly, didn't something happen to you once at an auction? I scratched my ear and won a white elephant that was too big to go in the room. (laughs) (laughs) And then you scratched the other ear and sold it again. (laughs) I guess that was easier. Mm -hmm. And aren't you just finished running into somebody else's car? But he was very nice, David. He wasn't Mr. Carrington's maniac nephew who embezzled all kinds of money from the First National Bank. Yes, well, I'm well aware of just how nice he was, Mrs. Norton. And, David, something very big is going to happen in June. Uh, It it won't even be twins. David, how can you say such a thing after Dr. Rowland promised to make us a special rate? It can't possibly be twins, darling. We're not that exciting. Say, what was I saying just a minute ago? You mean about nothing ever happening to us? Mm. Seems silly, doesn't it? Hey, wait for the light. Come back here. Yeah, it seems very silly. The things that have happened have been such big things and such small things, we just don't even talk about them half of the time. They're the things that make living and marriage real and exciting. Oh, David, I'm happy tonight. I feel that everyone loves me, and I can love everything back, and behind it all there's a reason. And what we feel now, this is only the beginning, the page in front of the first page. David, you're so very sure of everything. You must think I'm an awful coward when I worry all the time. It's just that I don't ever want anything to change from the way it is. Never. Darling... Someday something will happen, and you'll stand it. You'll be braver than you can imagine. You know, ever since I first looked at that house, I've had the feeling that I could see exactly how everything's going to turn out. I've known it has to be ours, and how happy we'll be in it. Of course, all of that was before I started sweating out Mr. Tucker in our bid. Oh, the bid again. You promised you weren't going to mention it all evening. Come on, we can go now. If you don't feed a man, how do you expect him to keep any promises? Yeah. I know there's going to be a fine place right around the corner. I bet you. I bet you. Here we go. Pizzeria. What's that mean? (laughs) 
means I win my bet and keep my promise. Come on, let's go in. Good evening, good evening, good evening. A lady and a gentleman. Good For dinner? We certainly are. Oh, that's a fine. We have a nice table over here by the wall. Thank you. My, that's a nice picture you have on the wall. Is that Naples? Uh, yes, madam, that is Naples. And that on the other wall, that is Jamaica Bay. Most Italians, they can talk all they want to. But, lady, you can take it from Luigi. Jamaica Bay, she's a lot better looking than Naples. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, Luigi. David, what part of Italy is Jamaica Bay? I've never heard of it. Jamaica Bay, my dear, is in the far western part of Italy. Oh? Very far. As a matter of fact, it's about five miles from where you're sitting. It's right here on the south side of Brooklyn. Why didn't anybody tell me these things? <laughs> We're doing our best. Well, Luigi, what can you give us for dinner? Some antipasto. You like antipasto? Claudia, do you like antipasto? Oh, what are they? Yes, you, you like them. And uh, Miss Minestrone, Luigi, you have good minestrone? It's all a homemade minestrone. Mm. It's the best minestrone in New York. It's a real minestrone bolognese. Mm, that's fine. And uh, a little spaghetti. Or you like ravioli? Both. And uh, what will you have to eat? To eat? Uh, scallopini. I bring a chicken cacciatore for the lady and scallopini for you. And uh, a salad? Of course. And a bottle of wine. Senor would like a lacrima Christi. Ah, senor, you have a fine dinner, you see. David, this sounds wonderful. What is it? What do you mean, the wine? It's mm. white wine, dear. Is it very expensive? Mm, it can be. Claudia. David, what's wrong? We just got through saying that nothing ever happens to us, and now something has. What's happened? I walked out of the house without my wallet. I have exactly 18 cents in my pocket. Oh, isn't it too bad we aren't in a restaurant we'd know? How could I do such a silly thing? I wonder. I, I wonder, I wonder. never happened to me before. Maybe you're right. You know, you've, you've never been nervous before. I'm not nervous. Why should I be nervous about a little bid on a little house? I'm sure I don't know. I'm not a bit nervous. You do seem awfully calm about the whole thing. Don't you even consider the possibility of washing the dishes in here all night long? Just because you forget your wallet, I have to wash the dishes. That is not fair. No, all right, all right, you win. I'm just as nervous as you are about the bid. Just as nervous, but for a different reason. What did you say? I said, look, darling, I'm holding your wallet. Isn't it wonderful, David? We both don't get nervous in the same way. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When Dad brings home a case of Coke in the car, the youngsters think... I'll ask some of the kids in after school tomorrow. You think, just in time for my club meeting. And Dad thinks, now there'll be plenty of Coke if I want a spot of refreshment after my chores. Yes, everyone in the family enjoys a feeling of extra well-being and anticipated pleasure when that hospitable case of Coca-Cola crosses the threshold. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.